So Marissa, can you tell us a little bit about your kidney journey? You mentioned in other episodes that you've been on dialysis twice mm -hmm. and that you've since had a kidney transplant. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about your story? It's like this lemon. It's um, not so pretty on the outside, but delicious on the inside. <laughs> um, yeah, so my, my journey started when I was um, in my early to mid 30s, uh, 20s, and um, I didn't know anything about kidney disease. And um, I just felt really unwell um, one April, and I had to get my gallbladder removed. And, um, but what they didn't know and what they didn't think to detect was to check my uh, creatine levels, and they were at 60%. And um, by June, they dropped down to 30%. And um, I was still feeling unwell. I was working at the Olympics, and um, so I was like, instincts said go to emergency, but emergency didn't detect anything. So I was like, I'm just gonna go see my GP, my general practitioner. And I went there on a Wednesday and did some blood work and peed in a cup. Sorry, not cooking language, but. Uh, if you're in kidneys, okay. <laughs> if, you're in, if you're in kidneys, you're, you're comfortable talking about this. So, um, so I went um, and did my blood work, and he said, "Give you a call in 24 hours. No news is good news." So, Thursday comes along, no news, awesome. And then um, Friday comes along, and they take an afternoon off, which I don't do. And I was shopping with my mom because I never seen her, and for a long, long time. And we're shopping in the mall, and then my doctor calls her, and he's like, "Are you with Marissa?" And she's like, yeah, we're shopping. How are you? What's going on? And I was like, bring her to the hospital right now. Oh, no. She's, uh, um, I was um, just uh, moments away from crashing into a coma. And my levels were that bad, and, and we didn't know. And nobody would have ever thought to check a 23-year-old for kidney failure. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I was going through. And I had to go on. Um, a lot of tests, and we did a lot to try to save my kidney. Um, went on a lot of steroids, my face ballooned up, and I got very strangely skinny. Luckily, like my kidney stayed well enough during the Olympics for me to do my job, because it was my dream job. So you were still working through all of this? Yeah. Oh, you're so inspiring. Marissa. Oh my god. <laughs> but after the Olympics finished and the Paralympics finished, so did my kidneys. And um, so in 2010, that's when I started dialysis. And it was really hard because they, they threw in a, a hemocatheter line. So those are what these scars are from. Um, it's hard to tell people, you know, these aren't hickeys. It's my, my bullet holes. I'm just kidding. No, um, so then I've had to learn how to love my scars. And um, I was on dialysis for about a year and a half. And um, the process for me was extremely depressing. I, 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 I gained the depression unmatchable, even to this day. And because my body was so confused, like, why are we still here? What's going on? Um, and my dad, he would literally like peel me off the couch and make me look at something beautiful, like a community garden or um, a hike. Well, he'd bring me to a higher place on the mountain to look and you know just kind of forcing me to see beauty and and it eventually helped and um, luckily I found a place where I got to work a couple hours and share and start bringing me a little bit back to life and um, and I was afraid to go on a uh, transplant because the transition from um, having kidney to dialysis was so stark I was too scared so um, Christmas came and um, my mom and I decided not to get each other gifts and said the only thing we're gonna do is sign each other's papers. So I'm gonna sign up for a kidney transplant and she's gonna sign up to be a donor. Wow. And, and we did it and we were a match. And um, um, Three months later, we found out that we were going to be a match, and you know, being a um, being a donor is really hard. Uh, you have to be like a superhuman, you know, not smoking, got to be very healthy and fit. And um, my mom, she lost a bit of weight, and um, she was really healthy, very active. So, um, so August in 2011, uh, after a long haul of dialysis, 
I got a kidney. Oh, yay. Yeah, the kidney was awesome and it lasted for nine years. Um, unfortunately, um, in 2020, um, I had some troubles and I had some rejection and uh, so um, I, I hit up in one of my friend's cabins for a few months to try to hold on to my kidney as long as I could. And, um, but uh, May 2020 is when my transplant failed and I went back on dialysis. And um, which is even harder because you know what you're signing up to. Yeah. And um, it's just really hard. So, so I, lots of prayer, um, ceremony, cooking is ceremony, visiting family is ceremony. So, you know, making sure that I find points of beauty to look at and um, moments to smile. Um, and, um, and it's a lot harder too with a second transplant because um, uh, instead of having a large pool of people to look at, uh, I was only able to match with 5% of the population. And um, so it was a lot of thought and prayer and after three and a half years, we found a match. And uh, so um, in a few days was my one year anniversary. One year anniversary, yeah. that's awesome. And um, yeah, I really want to thank anyone who are donors. Are um, my my kidney was um, was from someone who became red brain dead, and so that's really hard to accept. You know, um, someone's life ending to make your life continue is psychologically something to get because I don't want to hurt anybody. Um, However, you know, it, it was the family's wishes and um, now the gifts, you know, um, brought me back to life to my family. Um, it was really hard for me to participate. It was hard for me to get excited, um, very limited on energy and now you can't stop me. <laughs> Now I'm, I'm working again. Um, I'm contributing back to society. You know, um, dialysis taught me patience. It uh, taught me to be grateful. It taught me to be thankful just to wake up in my own bed. You know, um, it's all these like small moments that we take for granted. But, you know, waking up in your bed is such a luxury. Um, having energy to take a shower and brush your teeth. That's such a luxury. And, um, and now I'm cooking more, you know? Um, just massage that all in there and get it all nice and relaxed. Awesome. Going like in it. for its sauna. Um, <laughs> so I really encourage people who are thinking of donating. You know, it is really painful in the beginning. However, um, you're not only helping the person that receives the kidney, but you're helping my community. You know, my parents feel safer now. My sister has a best friend to play with again. Um, my nephews, um, they have empty favorite to hang out with. And, and now I'm here on a cooking show and we're making delicious food and we're spreading more joy. So, um, you know, it's, it's all about perspective and being grateful. Um, I could say, why did this happen to me? And I was a good person, I volunteered, I did good things. Um, but maybe this happened because I'm a great speaker and I could um, share my story and maybe it will help someone. Thank you so much for sharing your story. I really do think that we've learned so much today and not only with the food, but sharing this story. And I think you're right. It does have to do with you being able to really find this positive light, which not everybody could do. So many people would just curl up and be upset and you really come out of that and hmm. shared your story. And I think that's impactful for everyone. Thank you. So I've learned so much today. So thank you for sharing thank you. it with can us. Can I give you a hug? Yes, please. <laughs>